um, on our rentals, um, cash outs, portfolios. Uh, really, it depends on the size of the project. You add more doors, um, you know, that's going to string out into three to four weeks um, for, uh, for the portfolios cash outs. Um, on fix and flips, new construction, 90% uh, will go for a purchase and 90% of the rehab value. Okay. The new construction is my, uh, is my favorite. If you own a lot, we'll do 100% of the construction funds, 100%. Um, if you need help purchasing a lot, we'll do 90% of the lot and 90% of the funds. So it's um, new construction is my favorite. That's the best. Um, multifamily, we're really big into multi, or excuse me, um, value add. So we want you to find distressed properties. We give you the rehab funds to fi fix it up. It's a two-year loan. Uh, we want you to fix it up, stabilize it, and uh, refi it out what we call uh, get it Freddy ready for you. Um, that's kind of uh, my niche for... You're sexist. For uh, Why can't I go to Fannie? Well, you can go to Fannie. It's just... What, your cast only have to be it, Freddy? It, 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 Freddy rhymes. Yeah. Freddy ready. Rhymes well, come up with something Fanny. for Fanny, you sexist pig. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but again, you know, another thing is um, the service is also, you know, I'm local here, so I help you guys. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm your best friend. So I'm the one that looks at your deals, helps you structure deals. Because um, a lot of times when it gets into my underwriters, you know, sometimes they can't unsee things. So I'm that buffer. So I make sure that you know, you're sending in the right things so a deal doesn't die uh, or get killed right away. Um, I have little tricks of the trade that you don't really see on our website. Um, again, it's really that true partnership is what, is what I try to do. Um, Okay, so clients. you do rehab loans, new construction loans, multifamily loans. Yep. And wasn't it like a rental thirty that I saw? Yeah, that's the re that's the refi um, cash out or acquisition for rental properties. Okay. So, and actually, fixed to rent. Um, that's actually really popular right now. Uh, we were actually the first that I know of to market with that last August, and it's our fix and flip loan and our rental thirty combined into one closing. So it's for those investors that want to buy a property, fix it up. And you know they they're debating whether to flip it or keep it. Well, if you want to keep it, we actually can switch that into a long-term uh, rental program for you, and it's all it's all in one close when you first acquire it. So that's a that's a really uh, popular program. Right save now. the questions. Yeah, save them. I see brains moving. Yeah. I see some. I said save the questions, Vargas. <laughs> Let everybody get their introduction. Write it down. She's got paper. I saw you. I saw it going. Okay, this is Dennis Wells, branch manager of Wells Funding Group, a division of Midwest Equity. Is that better? Perfect. <laughs> what do you got for us? Um, so, again, kind of a wide range. So, obviously, we, uh, we do all of the um, Fatty, Freddy, Jenny, um, <coughs> straight up normal things. We also can broker out to we have a commercial lender that we work with that can do that, you know, fix and flip. Um, can also do the portfolios if you have you know, numerous properties that you want to um, do a refinance on and not do them all individually, we can do that. They can do it inside of LLC. Um, we also have non-qualified mortgage products, so um, <coughs> they can do multi-units, probably not as many um, as this gentleman here, but we can do some of those. Um, if you have somebody that wants, that really wants to buy your house and they just filed bankruptcy last year, uh, we have an ugly non-QM product for that um, that'll, you know, but it, we can get things done, you know, so we have outlets for all sorts of different, um, different options, whatever you're going to, you know, run into, um, you know, from your, your standard that's going to go to the GSEs uh, as well as things that are going to be held by private individuals or, um, like I said, those, uh, you know, those you know, more portfolio, more like commercial loan products we can get you. And John here from Sundance, uh, he has given several loans from an, his IRA, so he can talk about the benefits of that. Just really quickly, how many maybe would you guesstimate that you've done? Mm. Three or three. Three or three? Mm -hmm. Three or four. I was going to say three or four. That's almost like that offer I got in today that, you know, that I had to respond to. It said it came in at 6. I had to respond by 6 noon. There's three checkboxes, a.m., p.m., or noon. They type 6 and then check noon. I'm not really sure when I had to respond by, but that's what it is, 3 or 3, I guess. Yeah, so uh, what have you found as the benefit of lending from your IRA? What are some of the, the benefits there? Uh, well, one is that um, I, 
it, it's in, inside my <coughs> IRA, so I'm making money off it. Mm -hmm. um, the the company that uh, backs you know the loans wants to make sure that uh, uh, they're going to make that I get my principal et cetera back. Yeah. So they are secured loans. Um, it's an IRA custodian. You can't lend it to anybody that you know you're personally related to, and right. you can't lend it to yourself. Yeah. So there's there's and and those are things that the government sets up um, so that you can't kill your own IRA because you think you know what you're doing and you don't. Mm. Um, not that you still can't make bad loans, but uh, it's just something the IRS has yeah. to protect you. Now, the little knowledge I do have on IRAs, there's basically two types of IRA. Now, I think they're changing here soon. You have your Roth and your traditional. And the only way I could really tell the difference between the two is on a traditional, you don't pay taxes now when the money goes in. You pay it later in life. A Roth, you pay it now when you put the money in and you don't pay it later in life. To me, the difference is, do you want it to be taxed on the seed or on the tree? That's what I say is the difference. The, the thing to keep in mind in, with that is that uh, it depends on what you think your income is going to be later in life. Right. You know, if you, if you have a nine to five job in a factory, you're better off putting your money into a regular IRA. Mm -hmm. If you expect to have uh, an, a greater income later in life, then you want the Roth IRA where your taxes have already been paid. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, like uh, he had an IRA, but he was able to contribute to it. You also did some, you did some rollovers from past jobs. So you, you know, when, you, when your company lays you off or something like that, or they let you go, that's a great company that makes really good decisions, right? They let you go. Oh, don't keep your money with them. So many people have like old 401ks here, there, and everywhere. Roll them all over. Did you really, you know, that your employer gives you like, they usually have an agreement like uh, with, with Hewitt or something like that, and they give you like maybe 15 programs to choose from, and you have once a year you can elect the disbursements. Everybody, we just had that, right? You guys all had that if you have a nine to five, right? Did you know that you don't have to be limited to 15 things? You could be a venture capital person, angel funder, you can do private loans, you can do all sorts of things in a self-directed IRA. You just can't benefit from it directly. You can actually own a property in the self-directed IRA, as long as all expenses and, and profits go in and you know from and to the self-directed IRA. Technically, you can partner with it, but then you're starting to split hairs to really making sure you do your paperwork. All right? One I not dot it, you're hosed. Yeah, you can do commodities, you can do all sorts of stuff, and you can direct that. You aren't limited to just 15 funds that they give you. Huge things. The thing is, is a lot of people don't know about it. So from an investor standpoint, we have to teach them. We have to educate them. And that's, you know, John did it and he's been very happy with the returns he's gotten so far. What, I, am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Never wrong. Oh yeah, rule number one, John. Over here is Don Haas. Uh, Don is older than dirt. Don is a retired police commander. Uh, and he recently started taking up real estate and he found an excellent vehicle in private lending. Not only did he borrow a lot, but he's given a lot of private loans. Uh, you want to just share anything about that? We started uh, about three years ago, a little over three and a half years ago in this. And uh, from then till now, to scale up to where we're at right now, we've done approximately 90 properties in the last three years. In order to scale up like that, you need to have funding available to you. So uh, right now I have approximately 28 private lenders. I've written, in the last few years, I've probably written about 160 notes already. Uh, some of those are rollover notes where, you, where they've invested and they're getting good returns and they just continue to roll the money over. Um, it's important because there's a vast majority of people out there that are a wealth and actual wishing well of money sitting. And what you need to do is you have to have the ability to just go out and tap into that and kind of present yourself in a very confident way because you are doing the things you're doing. They can see that and ultimately what that does is it draws them in and then it ultimately you provide them the opportunity to get something back that they're not going to get back in the market. A little bit more security by maybe not being invested in the market that now has lost, what, 3,500 points? <laughs> well, it went up 1,000 yesterday yeah. and then it lost yeah. 900 today. There's a lot of people oh, after 2008 that really don't want to play in the market as much because uh, you could provide them an alternative where they have a tangible asset that they're going to draw a very good return 
that you can negotiate with them. Remember, a private loan is no different than me walking up and you saying, can you borrow, can I borrow 10 bucks till Friday because I gotta buy this, whatever food I wanna buy in a restaurant. You say, yeah, no problem, just pay me back on Friday. There's no difference to it. Now, obviously, if there's restrictions on it and you wanna do everything um, with uh, legal tender and everything else so that their asset is tied to a physical, tangible asset. In other words, their money is tied to a property. That property is not going to go anywhere. Unlike when you go to the market and you say, oh, I'm going to put this on this mutual fund. Okay, here's a piece of paper that says you've got that on a mutual fund. As opposed to, I can say, here's a property that I have here that I'm going to renovate, and you can actually come, feel, touch it. It's there. It's not going to go anywhere, and we're buying it at 45 to 50 cents on the dollar. So we're investing in a very low-risk investment and giving a high return. Yep, yep, it's real. <laughs> Maybe not real smart, but real. So there is the myriad of what we have. Does anybody have a Ralph? Do you want to you want to fire a question off over there? No, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your I have one. We have. The, I'm sorry. What was the question again? I gotta repeat what it. Is, oh. your application fee is there any application fee for the Lima one for the rehab ones? No application fee to do to start a loan or to do a loan, but we have two fees that we charge at closing to do the deal. And what are those fees? That's uh, the question. It's a processing fee of six hundred and fifty dollars, which is a flat rate. Um, are you talking fix and flip and new construction? Okay. Which one? It's fix and flip. Uh, Okay, fix, and, fix flip. and flip, then we're going to charge, we're, our fix and flip and new construction is based on experience, okay? So what that means is we look back 36 months and to see how many flips or fix to holds or rentals you've done in three years. So if you've done zero, that's okay. We love first time investors, but you start at tier one, which is our lowest tier, which is the highest rate, the lowest leverage and the greatest fees. So. Our top tier is tier five, which is the best fees and highest rate, highest or lowest rate, highest leverage. So to sum that up, it's our <coughs> processing fee is six hundred fifty dollars per deal, and then our origination or lender fee, the cost to, to us to lend you that money, will be three points to one point, <laughs> one to three points. That's okay, actually in a hard in the world of hard money. That's pretty cheap. Uh, so tier one, first time investor, never did any, never, never done a loan, 11 and percent interest only, 13 month term. Our average investor <clears throat> will buy a property, rehab it and sell it within three to five months. So think about that. You're only going to be making an interest only mortgage payment, maybe, if, you know, three times, if you can fix it up, rehab it and sell it, depending on the project, how big what? it is. Why would somebody go to you for a new construction loan versus one of the bigger banks? The question is, why would someone use Lima One rather than going to like Chase or PNC or some local, you know, physical bank? I'll, I'm going to ask you for six documents. One of those is your photo ID, no tax returns, no W-2s, no pay stubs. Um, and we're going to close and give you that money in about two weeks. You can do a spec home then? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you go yes, to a, can do a spec home. You, you go to a conventional bank. <clears throat> If they close the deal, it could take 30 to 60 days. And if anyone's done a refi of their own house or purchased a house, the documentation <coughs> is endless. Six documents. Yeah. And so there's no early payoff penalty with you guys? Oh, no, no, not, no, not in the fix and flips, not a new construction. We actually, you, we want you to, right. to get to, you know, Pay it fix early. it up and sell it within the faster you can do it, you know, the better. Because we want you to make that money. And then we want you to do another one, and then another one, and then scale, then move into rentals. So what are the six documents? Besides uh, photo ID, what are the okay. other five? So I need a purchase contract, a rehab budget. It's a form that I send you that you complete the rehab. Everything that you're gonna do to that property to hit that ARV, that after repair value, okay? okay. Um, if you guys are a first time investor, I don't need an experience tracker. If you've done more than one flip, I'll need an experience tracker. And really that's just a list of how many flips. Like a resume, okay. Exactly, yeah. And it's really just a simple Excel spreadsheet of purchase price, date, rehab budget, and I sold it on this day, okay? Entity docs, LLC. That's very important. I can only lend into an LLC. So you gotta have an LLC put together. If you don't have one and you our guys are new and you want to get into you know the real estate game, um, it's really pretty simple. You actually go on the state of Illinois website 
mm -hmm. uh, and form an LLC. It's only a couple hundred bucks. Um, uh, I need, here's, here's where the financials come in place. Two months bank statements. So you gotta have a little skin in the game. You gotta have a little money in the bank. So we ask for two months of bank statements. So, and, uh, or bank statements, or, you know, we can look at, uh, we'll count 100% of HELOC. We'll look at 401ks. We only count half, but we can count half of that as your liquid assets. So, and then your photo ID. You guys deal with Indiana? Uh, we lend, I forgot to mention this earlier, we lend nationally. Okay. Actually 40, uh, I shouldn't say nat 45 states and counting. There's about, yeah, I think we're, I think we're just got licensed in Utah now. So 45 states, we can lend, yeah, so Indiana. Let me guess, some of the states are uh, Alaska, California. No, California's huge. Um, really? Yeah. Um, Alaska, Hawaii, Louisiana. No, we, it's, you're here, okay, ready? Oh, no, hold on, you're always right. So sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, um, go ahead. No, Nevada is one. Um, yes. Because Nevada requires a brick and mortar presence yeah. and presence. So we can't lend in Nevada unless we either have a, a rep out there that we use as home at, or we get an office, um, an actual brick and mortar office. So we don't have that. So we can't lend there. Uh, we don't lend in Maine. Uh, we don't lend in Montana. And we don't lend in Alaska. And there's one more. Um, Maine, Vermont, Nevada. Hawaii, Louisiana. No, we got Hawaii. Oh, we got Louisiana. Um, it's, uh, Louisiana is it's usually hard because it's Parish. Uh, Idaho, Idaho. So those you are? States. <laughs> that lame joke. Yeah, so yeah, we oh, lend right national. Oh, Ryan, you got one. So, yeah. so it's <laughs> on the deal, not on your credit card. We, we do pull credit, yes, and we do. Um, but you're not providing that document. <laughs> no, we, we, we pull credit um, when you do an application with us, and it, you know we hold that credit, or we use that credit for three months. So you can actually do multiple deals, and, and we'll still use the, what we pulled that credit for. But yes, we use, um, you know, that that if you have we our lowest credit score to do any deal is a 600 but you're going to get the lowest leverage for that so if you're looking for that 90 percent purchase that 90 percent rehab you know i kind of shoot for and i tell hopefully your clients will have about 680 or better okay. so you had a question i was tier one and tier five are they the same down payment 10 percent down or yeah, same down payment. The only di the only difference is going to be um, uh, the question is is it the same down payment? Yeah, from tier one to tier five. Yeah, same. It's like the only difference in that tier five is you know it's the rate drops from that eleven and a half to about seven, interest only. Uh, your fees are going to go from three points to one point, and then uh, your loan to cost. Um, you know, and that's something that we can get into when you actually got a, a deal to look at. But there's a a threshold we have on a loan to cost that actually increases um, significantly for those two five. Questions, Rob? Quick question. So on the buy and hold multifamilies, so I got an example. Oh, not what now multifamilies, how many, how many door, like six, six units. Okay. Six so units. I can't do, so my, my fix to hold is only for one to four doors, one to four units. Okay. So, so you know, do multifamily five and up. Yeah. And that's, that's going to be a uh, value add or you, know, you can pr we can help you acquire one um, that's stabilized or do a refi cash out. <clears throat> so you guys don't pr provide financing if it's a six unit or something? Oh yeah, anything from five doors and up, five so, to 200 so for doors. For example, it's a six unit, um, mm -hmm. it's a value add play, it's fully vacant, all six Sure. Units. It's a vacant six unit, okay. okay. Vacant six unit, so it's a value add play where we're gonna go in there, rehab it. Yeah. You know, get the rents to where we need to be to market stabilization and then get a new stuff and then yeah. Um, so yeah. My, I guess my question is, from a financing perspective, what would you guys do? So let's say the purchase price is three fifty, then you got to spend another fifty thousand dollars for rehab renovation. So you're four hundred thousand dollars in. Where do you guys come in? Do you come in from the initial funding, or do you guys come in after everything's stabilized? Or what's your financing? Yeah, one second, let me repeat that. So he's got a six units completely vacant, and his example is if he bought it for three hundred fifty thousand dollars, put fifty thousand into it. Where could Lima One play in that game? Either initial lending for acquisition and rehab or refinance at stabilization or whatever. He's curious what that is. We will do, like, um, we love you, our investors to find distressed properties and we will give, uh, we will help with the purchase price and the rehab. Okay, and is that the 90-90 or is that uh, a different? That's gonna be, a, a multifamily is a whole different animal. We're gonna be capped at 80%. Of the purchase price? Yeah, and what about the purchase rehab? price and the, the rehab as, right. as a whole. But then are you guys going to be able to use the ARV 
get my cash back out of that deal or like you mean when you're right when it's stabilized and refinanced yeah well we, we're going to give you a two-year interest only loan on that so you, we want you to fix it up or buy it fix it up and then like i had mentioned earlier you're not going to want to stay you know it, it's basically a bridge loan you're okay. not going to stay okay. with us okay. Once it's stabilized, fixed up, you're gonna. It's gonna be ready for you to. Oh, Could they go to you to refinance it though? No, because we don't, on our multifamily. We just do the the two. Just year a loan. fix up. Yeah, just the okay. two year yeah, fix I, it up. I can be out of there in two months to the next. Oh yeah, the yeah. There's no okay. there's no prepayment penalty either. Okay. So if you can fix up that six unit in two months and then refi it to Fannie or Freddie, at that four percent or you know whatever right. you can get, then yeah, that by all means. Eighty percent, you said. Eighty percent. Right? Eighty percent of each. Eighty percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Otis. On, is there on, a low limit on on a floor on multifamily or on a single family? Let's say there's properties that are like <clears throat> purchase price fifty thousand. So you have a limit on. The question is: Is there a low limit on their single family fix and flip loans? Yes and no. Okay. What I mean by that is, if you mm -hmm. are a, we have a little caveat here in Chicagoland, especially South Side, and also in Detroit. Okay, those are the two in the in the nation. Uh, on our first time investors, so your tier one, tier two, or your newer investors, tier one, tier two, we require you have at least a 700 score and that purchase price to be at $100,000 or higher for tier one and tier two. Once you hit tier three, there's, there's no minimum. You could pick up 30,000 properties, $30,000 properties, okay? So basically what you're telling him is he needs to partner with someone who's done a few. Sure. There you is, see, there's always a way around this, right? Don't yeah. be dejected. Yeah, and um, how many people have done three fix and flips in the last thirty six months? You said. Yeah, we go back thirty six. Three months. years. How many people have done three flips in three years in this room? Anybody? Oh, there's a few up here. You could, you know, this is like you're hiding down here, Nate. Yeah. All right. Those are the people you can partner with if you want these loans, right? Okay. Yeah. Give up a little of the deal, at least yeah. you get it. So once you build up and do a little bit, you know, you do a few flips and you get a little experience, then yeah, there's no, there's no uh, minimum for purchase. You purchase price. Yeah. All right. Any questions for the private lender, the IRA lenders, or any other questions? Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Packer fan. Uh, new construction. Yes. Now, does, is that uh, a, a similar rate to your other? The, yeah, it's, the, it's, the question is, uh, what are the rates for new construction? For yeah, it's more? really the same as the, um, it's the same as the fix and flip. Okay. okay. So again, we want you to build that house. As quick as possible. As quick as possible, and then sell it. Or refinance it. Yeah, or yeah. Or and then you can go to Dennis to refinance yeah. it with Wells Funding. By the way, if those of you who don't know, I am part of one of our real estate brokerage, and we one of our you know lenders that we suggest people go to is Dennis. So I do refer him quite a bit, and I am in the process. In, in all full disclosure, I'm in the process of a refinance with uh, for my my what is it called Rental Thirty program, yeah. portfolio. Uh, the portfolio lend loan with Lima One. So with all full disclosure, I have taken private loans down here. So I know all these people and I can guarantee that they've done what they, they say they do. Okay, so that's my disclosure. So uh, would you have more to say about the new construction that I, before I jumped in? Kim, you had a question? Yeah, I do. Say we get a loan through you for the two years. Um, on for the multifamily? Fix and flip. It's not a fix, a fix and flip's not two years. It's 13 months. Okay. A single family fix and flip is 13 yeah. months. And we can go to one in, in one to four units. That's really important, one to four units. So. A lot of times, two flats, three flats, even four flats, people count that as a multifamily. We don't. We count that the same same as a single family. It's a residential loan. Single family, we have it for so many months. Um, we get it fixed like within, say, four or five months. Can we use that money then on another property? Is it specifically to one house? Then we pay it back. Is it to one house? Yeah, correct. It's okay. a one one house loan, or is it more of a line of credit that you can roll to another house, it's, to another it's house? For that, it's for that property. Yeah, it's a one house loan back, and you got to pay the fees for another one. Yeah, she's trying to get out of the fees there, well, we, Matt. Well, we do. I mean, she's a fee queen. <laughs> we we do offer lines of credit though. Hey, you forgot about that yeah, one. We do offer lines of credit. Anybody want to hear about the lines of credit? Yeah. yeah hey, there you go. Why don't you tell us? Uh, okay. So that's. I'm sure Dennis can talk about home equity lines of credits next. But yeah, go ahead. Lines of credit are, are super easy, um, but there are, are some caveats and there's basically some minimums. You got to have a 680 score or higher, and you got to have 100. You got to show in liquidity uh, in bank statements at least 125 thousand dollars. Okay, you show 125k, and you are, we can give up to seven times whatever you show us. So if you show us a million dollars in your 
in your uh, bank accounts, you are allowed up to, we'll give you up to $7 million line of credit. Uh, it's good for the year, but every quarter we'll ask for, you know, fresh bank statements to make sure you have at least that one, <laughs> that minimum of 125 in the, um, in the uh, account. So this cost every time you draw upon it for a project, I assume? So how it works then is then, so let's just say you show, you know, you show a million dollars for for round numbers, you know, a million dollars in your bank accounts or, you know, cumulative, you know, 401k, savings, money markets. You say, I've got a hundred, a um, million dollars. I want $5 million of uh, line of credit. So we'll put that aside. We'll close, we'll close it, put it in the escrow. That is your money to use. Okay. The beauty of that is to get the line of credit. We already go through your photo ID, your entity docs, um, your credit score, all that stuff. So really, you're just you just churn and burn deals meaning that all i need is a purchase contract and a rehab budget so so you have a lot of credit but i still have to submit the papers for every deal to get just, that line of credit it's not like a cash book it's not like a no, checkbook line of credit yeah you still got to go through the loan process but you don't have to submit financials we don't have to review them you don't have to send your entity docs and we got to that's all been done it's all been vetted you know so now you just have a line of credit so you can go out and build houses or do flips and just send send us basically email me a purchase contract and a rehab budget you still gotta have equity in the deal right 10 percent or something or yeah i mean you, yeah you still have to follow our guidelines for that for that deal i can't you know i can't give 100 <laughs> percent. it's really just i like to say it, it's like a fast pass to through the loan you know it's just you know we don't have to go through financials and entity docs and all that mm -hmm. and you can just submit a submit a purchase contract and we close in like two weeks mm -hmm. It takes the money part out of it. Then we're not asking for bank statements. We're not asking for this. What's that? What are the rates on that on the line of credit? Oh, it's, it could be different based on your score and based on your experience. But you know, on average, it's you know we can it's and that's the beauty of the line of credit. It's negotiable. So you know, one percent work a few. Yeah. No, nah, I mean it's t it's going to be all right. Fine. Point nine percent final offer. Like fees will be like around one. Like it'll be a flat uh, origination fee of probably about anywhere from one point two five percent to one and a half, and rates could be anywhere from seven to eight. So and it's just locked every you know it's locked on every deal. Hang on, I got one more for you. Nelson, you had a question. Uh, yes, a question. My uh, question was the time frame. How long does it take? You said fast two, track, but it's still two weeks. It's the same thing as doing the other one. What? What's the difference between doing going to for multiple fix and flip loans as opposed to the line of credit if I have to submit everything to you? What am I saving? Is it time? Is it money? What am I saving by doing it that way? Well, it's you can save time. We can actually close faster than two weeks. So, I mean, I've closed the fastest loan I've ever closed was nine day nine days, and that was including Christmas. That was on through the week of Christmas, where we were we were closed two days. Okay. So it, it's just it's a speed thing. Um, it's usually for the uh, you know the investors that just don't want to deal with submitting docs every single deal. You know their entity docs, their bank statements, their you know. And how long is that line established for? Like once I prove you I have money in the accounts and I don't have to resubmit bank accounts, it's, it's, when do I have to resubmit them the next time? Oh, the yeah. Question. So the line of credit's good for a year. But so every, I have to requalify every, every year. Every quarter, we'll just ask for an update. Oh, bank. quarterly. So and I still have to give you a quarterly. Well, just to show that. So every minimum, three months, I have to send you the bank statements anyway. That says 125000 So I still have to send you the bank statements every three months. Yeah. And the fixed flip loan is. So you're still not really selling me on why it's beneficial to go to line of credit, honestly. What's that? I, I, you're, not, you're, you're really not selling so, me on the benefit so, of doing that. So the, like, I, I have a builder that does lines of, or has a line of credit with us. And he just, he just goes, I don't want to deal with any bank statements and, you know, entity docs. He goes, I just want to be able to, you know, submit a contract and a budget. And he does like, you know, five to 10 to 15 at a time. So my analyst just takes those and he just basically orders the appraisal. He looks at the contract. I mean, the budget approves the budget, you know, approves the contract submits title docs for closing and those are done like basically within a week but that 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 builder just doesn't have to do any busy work any anything it's really just he emails me two docs uh, one question back there the young lady it's not it's not for everyone you know yeah for the line credit or only when it's out or uh, only when you only when you take out only when you take a loan out 
Yeah, for, for whatever property you close on, whatever deal that we that we close and fund. That's the only thing you, you pay on. You guys both met on LLCs, right? Four units? Y yes. Well, yeah, I mean, we could talk a little more. Dennis has got, you know, hasn't had a chance to talk. Is there any last questions over here, or do you want to talk to the, the traditional lender guy a little bit? Just one quick question on the, um, on the line of credit. If you were doing a fix and flip and it was getting towards the end of that 12-month uh, that period. 13-month, yeah. Thir then what would you do for, for extending that line of credit mm -hmm. until that deal is done? Well, well hopefully... On a fix and flip, you don't. You, I mean, really, uh, we sure hope you you're not going into that 13 month. Oh well, let's say if you, I, know. you know, if you bought a property in month eight. Yeah. So you're kind of on the bubble whether you're going to get it. Well, the line of credit is really just kind of like it's just money set aside for all your deals or deals you want to do. That loan that you closed on, that's that's already <clears throat> that money's already been taken out. That's been given. So you've got to follow the path of that of those terms. Okay. So it doesn't really have anything to do with the line of credit. That's <laughs> you know. I need you to call Miguel. I just received an offer. He oh, said yeah, to me, absolutely. turns out, yeah. that's the client yes. that Miguel has had. This agent never even showed the property. Sorry, that wasn't I'm not reaching. I'm going to reject a flipping offer if he doesn't use Miguel. So you will do call 30 year money on uh, like a mm -hmm. triplex, right? I'm sorry, what's that? You guys will do like a 30 year fix on a triplex under yeah. an LLC or whatever? Yes. What type of pricing are you guys doing on that kind of stuff? So, <coughs> you, um, there's a 90 day seasoning. You take it out of the LLC, close it in your name, and you can put it back in the LLC. Also, you gotta have it under your personal name. Hmm. The loan's under your personal name, not the yeah. LLC. Yeah. yeah. So you still have a recorded document in a publicly accessed document that says you are personally liable for the loan. And we also have a portfolio Just saying. Product. Yeah, we have a portfolio <laughs> product that we broker out that you can have multiple uh, properties in one LLC and they'll, they'll close it in the LLC. They'll close it in the LLC. They may have to do a personal guarantee, but it'll be well, in the they LLC. Run your, your credit. Yeah, yeah you got to do a PG. You also run that off the, the, the income of the property, not your income to qualify. <clears throat> not the person's income. Correct. The, the, the income just, when you said you're in, I just stopped. The, uh, the you're in, the, and then I didn't hear the come the part. You're in, yeah. is what I heard. Because yeah. <laughs> that's just my potty mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to clean it up. <laughs> Oh, oh they, where it's coming from. Right, yeah, actually, it turns out, it turns out, it, like the reason I keep checking my phone is it turns out it was better I was here because after two birthdays in 48 hours, they went full meltdown and it was better I was here. I guess the little fisticuffs were flying and everything like that. So, is sugar high? Yeah. Otis, what do you got? For Don and John, what are their parameters for lending? What are your parameters on lending or borrowing money privately or for an IRA? What do you normally, you know, feel comfortable with? Who do you feel comfortable lending to? What do you want to look at from the person? That kind of stuff. So for you, it's more, while return on investment is good, it's more important to get the return of the investment. Sure, because that, once you lose that capital, you can't re-leverage that capital, it's gone. If I get the capital the capital back, I can re-leverage it at least to make money off of it. Do you also charge points for uh, lending money out? No. no. So the private lender said no, the IRA lender said no, some people still do, but... You know, the beauty of private is it's private. It's negotiable because you're dealing with the principles. You know, the two of you can sit down and arm wrestle over stuff. Get them drunk. There you go. Oh, wait, Don doesn't drink. Neither does John. Sucks to be you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, it's just a level of trust. Yeah. You're, you're selling trust. That's, really uh, so that's the only requirements you got is basically by the deal. And if you've worked with somebody or know somebody that knows you're true to your word, you did good deals in the past. Right, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna look at the totality of the deal. I mean, right. You're, you're, just, you're gonna say, right. what's, you're gonna, what's the ARV, what's your rehab, what's, yeah. what, 
what exactly is the property valued at? Where are you buying it? How much skin do you have in the game? Right. Let me uh, let me ask you this. You know, what what guarantee does someone get when they buy a stock? They do a little research, right? But in the end, they're just trusting their judgment. Yeah. It's the same exact thing. Do you think anybody is enjoying the fact that they own Sears stock? Or uh, what was the Enron? That was really good, right? But hey, it showed a great track record, right? No? What I find is a truly the Art Van announced this going out of business today. Really? Good is that it's, you're offering a tangible asset. Right. You're offering, I can feel it, I can Get some discount furniture there, this weekend. As opposed to something that stores, too. On some internet or, you know, in yeah. some stock portfolio. Yeah. Uh, Nelson, you had another one? And then I'll get to Strab and then Alana. Dennis, he does, he does LLCs. He also does your personal name. He does traditional home loans. I refer a ton of those out for him. The LLC, will you do out of state and then is there a minimum? What states do you lend in and is there a minimum on your loans of the LLC portfolio thing that you um, mentioned? Do you so know? For me, I lend in um, Illinois, Indiana, and Florida. Um, and what was there? So the other is there a minimum loan amount for the loan that's in the LLC, the portfolio? Um, more properties you would do with LLC. Um, yeah. So there's um, yeah with the with the uh, uh, portfolio that we do, um, you can instead of having an individual loan on each property, you're, you're just spending them all together. And an umbrella um, loan. Um, yeah. I I don't know that there's necessarily a, a minimum there. I know like on our end, if you're doing like a investment loan, you know, straight in your name, um, you know, we're going to look at, you know, probably a hundred thousand dollars in minimum purchase price on that just because, you know, it, it's hard to get investment loans done for under $75,000. So. The reason is they do all this work and they take a percent. Yeah. All right. They well, want to, they want to, they want to get a return on their time and, well, and, you and they're greedy bitches. I'm we sorry. Are, what? We are greedy, <laughs> but, but, you, but you fail point in fees pretty easily if you get those lower loan amounts yeah. because the government wants to protect everybody. So, Damn it, government. <laughs> um, I only do HELOCs on purchases. So we can do uh, a combination of first mortgage uh, HELOC all the way up to 100%. So if I, you don't do it, like if I have my house and it's the house is worth a million and I have a $400,000 loan, you won't give me a $200,000 second position HELOC? No, but I'll cash you out and give you cash in hand. I don't want to cash out. I want a HELOC, so I only pay interest when it's out. But I only want to pay interest on the money that's out when it's out. That's the beauty of a HELOC. Well, but then you can take your money and you can invest it with Don, and he can loan it out to other people and make more money. <laughs> oh, you're so full of shit, Dennis. Anyway, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. Don was buying all this. Hold on, hold on. Alana, you had a question. Will you do a line of credit to a business or an LLC? Secured or unsecured, either yeah, so one. They, so they basically what they'll do is um, they'll do like a, a line of credit for you to go and purchase things. Um, and then there is, you know, like that, there's the origination charge on you know, every one that you do. But it's interest only, um, you know, as, as you do that, and then you can, you know, it's like the fix and flip. And then, um, you know, they also have something where you know, you can, you know, the other side of it is you buy it and hold it and rent it out. What's so. the fee and what's the rate? Okay, uh, rates as low as 6.75 and the origination runs um, the low at two, the high at three points. Mm -hmm. Return time to get that low? Um, um, probably, you know, within a month or so. so but if, if it's a HELOC, you said you allow so you go oh, like yeah. When, once you get to the point where you're in it, you can you can turn them really quick. You know, it's right, just check you know, the next day after that. I don't know if it's the next day, but you're probably looking within a, a couple weeks. The and most. how long can it stay open? So uh, 12 to 18 <coughs> months. Uh, they, you know, and again, they like it. You know, they like your fix and flips done in 12 months, but they can extend them out to 18. They also do some construction loans as well. We have a couple different options for that. If you want to do a um, construction to perm. Um, we can do that with an investor that will do everything and hold the end loan. Or you can, uh, you know, there's the commercial where, you know, you, you can get the lot 10% down um, and they do the, the, the lot and the construction interest only until you're done and then we can turn it into an end loan at, at the end. Is this also tied to one property or can you keep turning it to another property? Uh, you can keep churning it, but you know, every, every time you take it out, it is tied to the one property. 
So, you, so you're dealing with the multiple origination charges on there. Uh, Don, you had a question in the back? Uh, yes, what are your 30 year rates at, Don? Um, program? Just a regular 30 year rate. Uh, okay. Owner occupied, traditional in my own personal name, 30 year rate? Um, no, no points, three and a half on conventional. Um, you know, you can buy it down to whatever you, you want um, under, under three. Uh, you know, our, I always tell people that you know, every rate is a strategy. So, hey, Dennis, what's a point and what's the buy down? What does that mean? Okay, so uh, a point is a 1% of the loan amount. So, if you, um, you know, wherever the interest rate is, you know, without paying anything, you know, right now, like three and a half on the conventional 30, um, going down, if you pay like 1%. You might drop it down to three and a quarter. You pay two percent. You might drop it down to three. So if you pay more up front, you save more in interest over the life of the loan, right? So, but again, one percent is equal to you know, or, or one point is equal to one percent of the loan yeah. amount. So it's a hundred thousand dollars. It's a thousand dollars a point. So if I pay ten percent, then I only have to pay a quarter percent. <laughs> 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 ah, well played. Well played. Uh, Otis, you had another question. It's, it's for Don, everything's negotiable, baby. It depends on you. That's the beauty of a private lender. Everything's on you. You want to include it? We'll talk about it. You want it on the settlement statement? Eh, we'll see. It depends on you. Think about when you go to the airport. Some people fly so much, you just breeze through security, right? They trust you. Same thing. You get benefits for frequent flyers. The more you do, the more I trust you, right? Or you can show you can produce. It's so different with Lima One. I mean, look at what he's talking about. Your rates will always what? Your value of that you're paying for the money will decrease when you prove over time that you are a good entity. <coughs> so what happens to the risk level? Yeah, you go from a high risk down to a low risk. Michael, Michael, the guy goes to the other. Um, I want to get the lowest you. risk Guess what? on my principal. I just got an offer from another agent with that name on it. Agent never showed the property. Client, there's an offer in 2004 Madison. Yeah, what's yeah. in his name? How long does it take to sell one? No. Yeah, I got the purchase contract. Okay. Because there was a guy uh, I talked to case. last night. He said that Maybe he was working on the fairway. And, uh, and I, I used Midland. I set an appointment for him. He didn't show uh, up. Rucker? Of, um, hmm? Rucker? Yeah. Like Chicago, and uh, they have an office in I think, uh, Florida now also. Is there a cost associated with this one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's minimal. It, it is. It depends on how much you go into your IRA. If the lower rate, you have to pay a different fee. If you're over, I think, uh, $100,000, it's a, high, a different fee. You can do a one-time flat fee for an IRA. And then when you loan the money out, um, their fee is based on, uh, it's a percent of the loan. Also, they need to cut up that actual lending out portion. I don't know, want to say a cut, but that's their fee a for the manager, origin, the managing. Yeah, 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 yeah that, that's the guy. He, um, acting, he said he was getting his pre-approval from Fairway and that yeah, the they guy have, wasn't getting back to him. Can, yeah, who's the loan officer, Chad? To Miller. Of what you're lending out that you're paying hmm. them in a fee or you can do per asset. It all depends on what the company is offering. They offer different some of them will, can, will offer an actual self-directed self IRA where you set up an LLC for that self-directed IRA right. and you manage that self-directed IRA. So therefore, the reoccurring fees on application are different. Whereas like with me, when I deal with somebody that has an actual self-directed <coughs> IRA, if I write a note, a one-year term note, and in six months the property is, is re renovated and sold, if I send that money back to the self-directed IRA, whatever that company is, there's going to be another origination fee when it comes back to the next project. Mm -hmm. So on that, with a self-directed <coughs> IRA, you would be looking for a note that's anywhere from three to five year term. And the reason for that being is, is if I'm not sending it back, what are you not paying? Fees. You're not paying fees. fees. So your interest will roll until you actually what? Get pay, the pay. interest back. And at that point, it goes back to the self-directed IRA. So that way it saves you that money. 
And that's what, from a private lending standpoint, if somebody has that availability, that's one of the selling points you want to let them know. Look, this note's not going to be one year. It's going to be a longer term so that I'm saving you money. Who wants to pay $300 every time you go to, to put your money down on a note on a property? I mean, if you leverage that money three times in a year, you're paying almost $1,000. And it kind of defeats the purpose of churning it fast. So, any other questions for anybody on the panel? Well, made for you, Ryan. Oh, crap. I thought I was going to go with it. Just for beginners, what do you recommend? What do I recommend for what? For someone who's just starting. For what? <laughs> Where to start on what? Money? Properties? Yes, properties. Education. Property. Education. Yes. Education. That's what I'm telling you to start. The simplest thing I can tell you is this. You are having, all you say is you want to get into real estate, right? But as I mentioned earlier tonight, real estate is, there's so many different areas you can get into, right? Come to events like this and talk to everybody and find out what they do. And when they tell you what they do, if you keep asking them questions and you seem excited, that's what you want to do. If you're like, that seems weird, that's not what you want to do. <clears throat> Then learn as much as you can from that person and find out who else is doing that same thing and learn as much as you can from them and glean that, right? Then from there, that can help get you going. I can't tell you where to start because I don't know what the hell you want to do, right? You know? Oh, you want to walk again? There, that Benny Hinn on the late night infomercial will heal you. No, I'm kidding. No, you want to start, you want to start, find out, go around and talk to everybody. What? Then he heals people every night. Haven't you ever seen them? And it's like, you know, you're like, Whoa, they fall over and it's a praise, a miracle. No, but what I'm saying is so many people get excited about everything and they want to do it all. And that gets them in trouble because they can't keep it. You know, years and years and years ago, maybe some of us up here can remember, like on the Ed Sullivan show, one of the big things was a guy that would spin plates on, on sticks. Yeah. Right? After you got to like so many, they'd fall because you couldn't keep up with the other ones, right? That's how it they'd always end in failure, right? And that's what would happen. Well, that's the problem. When you're trying to spin so many plates, you can't keep them all spinning fast enough that they stay on. Just focus on a couple. That's it. And what you want to do is figure out what intrigues you the most, what excites you the most, right? Take it a different way. You go to a room, there's like 30 women. Which one excites you the most? Go to that one. Same thing. Go talk to them. Find out which one you want to talk to more. That's what you want to do with real estate. It's a horrible analogy, but it's true. Okay? It's true, and that's what you want to do. I'm sorry if I've been a little distracted up here, but uh, somebody's trying to be a bitch tonight. All right? Not in here. I have a property for sale. A guy has been working with my listing agent, has seen it with my listing agent. Listing agent even suggested he go to Dennis to get an appointment to get his loan approved because he was working with Leonard, but he couldn't get a hold of him, couldn't get his pre-approval. It took days to get the pre-approval. He never, he ghosted Dennis today. Well, I, I, I talked to him last night. Oh, you did? And he said he wanted to give the lender till the morning. But well, I said, well, tell you what, let's set an appointment. You know, you, you bring your stuff in and we'll get you the pre-approval tomorrow. And then he ghosted me. Yes. I received an offer today. Amazing. From that guy, not using the agent that showed him the properties. From an agent that never even requested to see my property. Should or shouldn't I let him do that because it's unethical and it's a breach of his licensing? You cannot, not, you cannot scorn someone who has procuring cause. So what's going to happen is I'm going to reject the damn offer. The guy's never going to buy the flipping house. He's never going to step foot in the house because he's going to backstab all the work that we did on it. And then I'm going to march to the realtor board and report the realtor for trying to get a commission for doing zero work. And not asking the important question they're supposed to ask is, are you working with a realtor? Sorry. All the realtors in this room probably just got excited that I actually will stand up for something like that. Because it happens all the fucking time. One thing in this business you better have is a, a, a set of ethics. You don't have ethics, get out of my freaking room right now. All right, you tell someone you're going to do something, you do it. All right, if you don't do it, get out. I am not going to stand by that. This guy's going to get called out. What? You've yeah. seen this before. You started to get up. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. That's going to get a video, though. <laughs> Sorry. That really bothers me. So if I was a little distracted, it's really bothering me that my listing agent has worked his tail off to try to get this done and has driven out to this property several times to show it. He's going to get screwed on the commission he should have earned because some punk realtor thinks he can do that. 
And if you think I'm going to let that client buy my house, I don't give a crap. He comes back and uses my agent and spends $10,000 over a list. Screw that. I'm going to teach him a lesson. I'm not going to accept the damn thing. I'm going to reject it and he can go f himself. All right? Okay, I will actually, Frank. Let's have a beer. So I'm sorry if I'm distracted. Any other question for our steam panel of um, lenders up here? Yeah, Frank. Oh, thank you! <laughs> what is FH? What's the story on FH, Dan? It's five houses. I have five kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hold on. Hold on a second. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I sneezed. That, that's uh, that's a story you will be told when we build a level of trust. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the game show. It's the same answer I gave when somebody asked me what WCRT stands for. So that's awesome. So, but yes, I'm going to be rejecting that flipping offer. And if that agent ever steps, you know, will never step foot in one of my houses, then that buyer will never buy our properties ever. I don't deal with it. So you and we're going to report that realtor to the realtor board regardless tomorrow. What's their nickname? Who's this guy? Yeah. No. No, it's not diarrhea, that's for sure. <laughs> so I just dealt with an agent that was terrible. Just one of the worst realtors I've ever dealt with, and we nicknamed her Diarrhea. <laughs> so. Huh. Yeah. Frank, for a question for Matt. How, for the, uh, the rehab portion of the loan, mm -hmm. the, the structure in a, a draw? What's the draw? How do you get the draw payments on the rehab portion yeah. of the funds for the, his fix that's and flip loans? That's a great question. So um, our rehab funds when you, at closing are going to be set in escrow, okay? and we work on a reimbursement platform. So kind of like do an expense report. So you're gonna submit receipts and you can upload them into our portal. Um, and you submit receipts for the work that you did. Um, it could be for you know labor, it could be for materials. And then once you submit the receipts, that triggers us to send out an inspector that's gonna inspect what you did to make sure that everything matches. And then after that, we wire you the money into your account. That whole process, from your submitting receipts, inspector, to wiring the money, takes about three days, three to four days. So it's important that your scope of work for your project is very detailed because it's a lot easier for him to track it and you're gonna set up your time for your payments. So that way when you get it there, you know you can account for the fact that this is all done, he checks it off and the money goes. Yeah, it's a quick process. And j But just to, uh, again, I'm very transparent and upfront with everything. There is, on every draw, there is a $200 draw fee. You don't pay for it direct. It doesn't come out of your pocket. It comes out of the budget. But that $200 is really just to cover the cost of the uh, inspector. That's it. So. Um, on tier one and tier two, so our newer investors, you will pay uh, the interest on the rehab funds if, if they're not drawn. When you hit that tier three and up, you don't pay interest on undrawn funds. So that's a huge, again, that's that's a huge benefit. A uh, huge benefit. Again, it goes back to what Don was saying about that, that partnership, that trust. Um, it's, it's a perk. You know, it's a little carrot to, you know, keep doing deals with us, keep partnering with us to get, move up in tier, and that's one of the benefits. You so don't pay interest. So you do pay interest if you're tier? Tier one and tier two. So you new, don't use the funds. Yeah, if you, yeah. yeah. So the second we close, you know, and you haven't even done a draw yet, you're paying interest <coughs> on those, on, the, on a whole loan amount. What makes it's like a tier three? What's that? What's a tier three? Uh, tier three, again, looking back 36 months for experience, if you've done uh, five properties or more. And that could be uh, fix and flips, that can be fixed to rents, it could be just rentals, and they don't have to be with us. So, you know, it doesn't have to be with a, a Lima One loan, it could be with anyone. So just five, five flips, five rentals, or five fixed holds. Yay. So the, the, the thing we really look at the most is that rehab. You know, we like to make sure that's where your experience really comes in. You know, really anyone can go buy a house. It's really that, that rehab, um, you know, dealing with contractors and, and, and figuring that out is the, is, is that's the, the real meat and potatoes of, of the loans. So, and one other thing is we have a construction management team. I don't know if any other hard money lenders have that. We actually have a construction management team that goes over and, and reviews your budget and vets it. And what we mean by that is we don't let you fail. 
So we do everything we can to make you, we have to make you successful. So what we do is if you submit us a budget, we're gonna review it and make sure, we're gonna go line by line and just make sure that you guys are doing the right things so that you hit that after repair value. So, you know, if for, we don't let you over budget, we don't want to lend you money that, uh, you know, or lend you more than you need. We don't want to over leverage you. So we're going to actually look at that, that budget and make sure you're doing the right thing. So it might come back where you have, oh, I want to put $8,000 worth of cabinets in there. And we'll say, you know, based on the comps, based on the area, you don't need, you don't need $8,000 worth of, you know, cabinets to hit that ARV. Oh. So we'll make, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> that's that a good. cabinet supplier no, in the back. No, that's, yeah. <laughs> So, well played, Summer. Yeah. So anyway, we'll we'll go through it, that uh, budget to make sure that it's the right, you know, the right numbers to hit that air race to make you successful, because we need you to be successful. Yeah. Question right here. Um, how does your application work for like uh, partnership or LLC partnership? How does the application work for Lima One? Lima One. Yeah, well, uh, if it's an LLC, yes, meaning. Well, you should both be in the LLC. The loan is to the LLC. What would be a cool Yeah. So, it, so in your operating agreement, you're going to have a percentage of ownership. So if you split, okay, so it's 50-50. Um, are, they, are you both going to be on the loan and sign a personal guarantor? Because, I mean, that's, are, are they going to show asset? Are you going to use all your money or is he, he or she going to show money? Who's bringing the 10% so and 10%? Yeah. Because it's 90-90, right? So who's bringing the 10 and 10? Okay. So, okay. so if, if you're going to use assets, you know, and you know, basically, if your if your partner is going to show assets, then they're going to have to be on the loan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. You know, you have to be part of the loan to use assets. Both partners would have to qualify exactly. if they're both bringing in money. But that's only if they're fifty-fifty. If your partner's one percent. Well, actually, no. That's no. We actually. So the question is, if it's not fifty-fifty partners, if it's ninety-nine-one, do both people have to be on it? Um. If, if your partners, and these are some of the tricks of the trades, when, when I'm helping you do a deal that's not in our guidelines and not a lot of people tell you, if you put your uh, partner in the operating agreement at under 20%. Right. At under 20% that we can't, we won't look at their, we won't pull credit and we won't um, you know, use their assets, so. What's that, what's that uh, I'm Mr. 101, remember that, that Christmas thing? You know, heat miser, I'm Mr. 101, I'm Mr. 19.9. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, moral of the story, if you've got bad credit, find somebody with good credit, and you take 20% and yeah. 80%. you 80%. Because you know what? 20% of something is still better than 100% of nothing. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't be greedy. I posted it today. Pigs get fed. Hogs get slaughtered. So Daryl actually liked that one. He commented it. For the first time Daryl's ever commented on any of my posts. Something happened. I know he lost a lot of relatives recently, but something happened. We need to like have a cigar night and cheers up, up with a little Remy. If anybody's a landlord, isn't our buddy is a big cop, very tough looking. He serves eviction papers and 30 day notices and people leave when he shows up at the door. <laughs> I shook his hand once and I couldn't find my hand. It just disappeared. <laughs> very nice guy though. Very nice guy. And he's one of those guys that's like really loyal. You have his back, he's got yours all day long. He's a great guy. So uh, usually at the SCAR meetings that we have on the third Thursday, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Any final questions? Last round. One more right here. Uh, for Matt, on the uh, tier one or two on fix and flips, uh, is there a limit of how many loans you can do at one time? Yes. Like in Very good question. Two. Okay. Two. Once you hit tier three, you can do as many as you want. But a hundred? You could. Okay. I mean, technically could. But tier one and tier two, we're going to keep you at two because you guys are new. So we don't want you to over leverage yourself. So we actually protect you and say, hey, two is enough. Start with two, handle those, and then, and then, but as soon as you sell one, and if you still have one, you know, in process, you can still add another. You just can have, you know, two at the same time going. Okay. So. All right. How about. A big round of applause, big thank you. If you guys want to talk to these guys, I'm sure they'll stick around. I know there's some information on the back tables from Wells Funding Group. Look, you know, they're 